I will. It's that time again. Coffee with the canter. Cantor Moshe Ganshoff was known with deep respect throughout his life as the Cantor's Cantor. Have a listen to this. In order to sing a piece of Chazonus, the real art of it is not to sing a piece of Chazonus. Remember you said that? It's hard to explain. You're, you're davening and you feel it. You feel it. You're, you're in the process of davening. Make your thing different. You can't come to the of davening. The feeling is different. My feeling is different when I dove. It's not the bear. How can you explain the process of davening? How can you explain that? You can explain the process of it consciously. You, know, you do it and uh, you do it uh, as, as a showpiece. And, and davening is no showpiece. You know, once I had a discussion with Pinchik, I was sitting and uh, one of the opera singers came up. He asked him, what do you do, Shabbos? He says, I prepare a recipe for Shabbos. And I rest the deep of us, so pitch it left and I left again. It, it comes suddenly and you can't prepare anything to shop it. As you go along the, the, the warmth and the feeling in the synagogue, the art, the dominating process, you hear murmurs of dominating and true, it makes you, it creates something in you. Moshe Ganshoff was born in Odessa, a city rich at the time with long standing cantorial traditions. His mother came from a religiously observant family, but his father was a secular Bundist, part of the Jewish Socialist Malay. Although Ganshoff's childhood exposure to some of Europe's greatest cantorial masters made an incredible impression on him in Odessa, it was in America that the serious introduction to Chazanot truly informed his path. Among all the well-renowned cantors in America, he was the only one to acquire all of his cantorial knowledge in the United States. His vocal gifts were discovered when he sang in a school choir, and although he was taught privately in the rudiments of music, especially solfeggio by Irving Cobran, a local cantor in Toledo, who had a classical and worldly background, his considerable general musicianship was largely self-acquired. In Toledo, as a youth, Ganshoff sang in the choir of cantor Simon Zemachsen, who also conducted and wrote for the choir, and through that experience he became acquainted with the choral as well as the recitative repertoire of the classical Eastern European synagogues. He also worked with Chazan Joshua Lint. He also sang in synagogue choirs. He also benefited from tutorial work with Chazan Joshua Lint, and he sang in synagogue choirs uh, directed by such respected choir masters such as Leo Lowe and Maya Machtenberg with such star cantors as Josela Rosenblatt Mordechai Hirschman, and he later cited that this experience uh, formed a major part of his cantorial education. By the 1940s, Ganshoff had emerged as a star cantor. Through the 1970s, he served a number of New York's most uh, prestigious uh, traditional synagogues, recorded some of his own settings as well as pieces from the classical European synagogue repertoire. He made concerts and tours of Europe, Central and South America, and certainly of Israel. Ganshoff taught cantorial students for many years at the School of Sacred Music of Hebrew Union College, influencing entire generations of young cantors. During his last decades, he was well aware that he was upholding an endangered tradition, but when he was asked if it could be maintained in future generations, he affirmed his faith in his best students and protégés to do so, saying Chazanut will survive because it is beautiful. And truly, beauty lives. That was something that he said two years before his death in 1997. Still, as an artistic product of an environment informed by sensibilities now largely foreign, Ganshoff is properly considered the last of the great masters of the Golden Age.
Oh, you are. 